got a uh, 100 meter uh, underwater sonar, echologger.com's ECT400. Uh, it's also got a couple of thrusters, you'll see. Uh, two thrusters from Blue Robotics. And of course, the frame is a boogie board. So it's, uh, and this is a waterproof um, uh, enclosure for the electronics at the top. So it's very, very simple, very functional, uh, and uh, yeah, basically a low cost <laughs> mapping boat. So uh, this uh, echo logger, we're just getting the simple distance to the bottom of the lake. Um, it can actually capture backscatter as well, but it's meant for just producing simple maps. There's no companion computer on here, so um, you know, that also keeps the cost down. Uh, it, uh, what, what you do is you basically input a little mission, like we've got here. Input a simple mission. Uh, put it in auto mode. As it's driving around, you can see the distance uh, to the bottom uh, on the screen there. And uh, once you're done, you, you download the data flash logs. And inside of it, there's a depth message. And you extract that depth message and you upload it into a program called, well, you can use whatever you want, but I use ReefMaster. And then it'll produce a pretty little 3D graph for you. So this is actually this lake. We did it a couple days ago uh, with some students. And uh, you know, it's a little 3D view. It's not very exciting. Um, you know, it's about one meter here at the near the dock, and it goes out to about four meters deep in the middle. And there's a slightly weird hole over there, which is about nine meters deep. Who knows what that is? But uh, you know, I guess that's part of the fun. So we're just gonna do a similar um, little mission. Uh, it's going to so it is uh, taking depth from a uh, sensor. Yep. Depth so yeah, message. The sensor is directly connected to Pixar. Pixar. Okay. To the cube, rather. It's a uh, ECT 400 from Echologger.com. It's a, <coughs> hmm? uh, the interface is Nemea. Yeah. So normally, like you know how GPS is using Nemea and MEA. It's Nemea protocol is not just for GPSs. It can do all kinds of things. So. And in fact, there's many different echo loggers, sorry, uh, underwater sonar that use Namiya. So in fact, you don't have to use this one. There's, um, you know, lots of other, in Myanmar, and a whole bunch of other companies make compatible sounders. Okay. So, now one, a couple of problems. This is like an early prototype, you know? So it's got a few, a few issues that we're gonna work out in the future versions, but one of them is, um, well, the, the great thing is that it's super, super agile. It's a skid steering rover. So if it wants to turn right, it powers up the left thruster. If it wants to turn left, it powers up the right thruster. It has no rudder, uh, so it's very agile. But uh, one issue is that these thrusters are very close to the bottom. So you'll see here we have a lot of weeds, and I'm sure that it's going to get stuck. Uh, so you know. It, you know, I think in a future version we're going to move these lower so that the weeds kind of go over top of the motors instead of into the motors. Okay. A little power button on the outside here. Okay. So yeah, that turns on and off the motors. Uh, ideally in the future too, it would be really great if uh, we could have um, external charging. So right now to charge the battery, you actually have to open up the case. It's really annoying. Uh, so it would be great if we had an external charger so you just sort of, you know, attach a charger to the outside. And then you never have to open the case at all. All right. So we'll give it a go. Do you need have a separate power system for both the motors and the controllers? Uh, right now, it's, no, it's all the same. It's just a single battery. We've got quite a small battery in here. It's only a 3,200 milliamp power battery. So it can only drive around for about 15 or 20 minutes. But, you know, bigger case, bigger battery. It's a prototype. Uh, you know, idea, because you probably want to have at least an hour. Whatever. Okay, hold on. Can you bring that? Uh,